Hi, um, this is Seb here. I'm going to show you a few upmine guides. We're launching a beta um, imminently, or we've got a few people coming on board already, and I wanted to put some video guides up so that the people who are using that beta are able to see how to do things in the interface before we start building in a few more easy to use flows. So what I'm going to do in this video here, I've got a brand new demo upmine instance I've just signed up, I've added a few clients, there's nothing really uh, here at all yet. Um, and I've also just signed up for a brand new reseller account uh, with WHM, a demo reseller account. So, so what I'm going to set up today is I'm going to set up, link that WHM reseller into my new upmine instance, I'm going to create a hosting package and I'm going to order that hosting package as a customer and hopefully that will then create the hosting package for that customer on the server. This is something that lots of people are going to be using Upmind for. So let's start in Upmind and here you can see this is where my, my list of my demo clients, um, I have my products and services here. Uh, I created one earlier just to test but we'll create another one in a second. Um, if I go to settings, the place I add things like web servers and domain providers is under provision configurations. So provision configurations is, if I had five reseller accounts, they would list here. You can see I've added one as an example here, we're gonna add another one. So to add a new WHM server, that's either a reseller account, or if I had a full server with root access, it's where I would add that as well. Um, let's add it here. So let's call this uh, second server in New York. You can give it any name you want. Most people would probably wanna just enter the host name here for easy access or easy understanding. Uh, shared web hosting, uh, let's choose cPanel. These tick boxes, don't worry about for now, I'll talk you through that at another time. Uh, protocol, HTTPS of course. Uh, the server name, the host name is this. Host name and the port is that. Uh, the username is gonna be this, demo R-E-S-E. And the API key, we use the API key rather than the WHM password. You get the API key in WHM. Let's create it here. Make sure we've got all these privileges ticked. I'll copy the token. Location, let's call this New York. Hosting provider, not applicable. I'm going to explain to you why we have these extra meta configuration options here as well. Um, I'm going to briefly touch on it today and then we'll cover provisioning and deployment options in another video. So we create that. So you now you see I've got two cPanel servers here. Now, I now need to create a product. I created one here earlier as an example, but let's create another one. So web hosting, uh, I've created a new category if I want. We'll call this uh, example hosting package two. Create. So I can pad this out with information if I want, but the most important things here are billing. It's a hosting package, so I want it to be recurring. Let's say monthly, 10 pounds. Then I want to go down to provisioning. Provisioning is when this hosting package is ordered, provisioning chooses where it goes, where it's deployed to. And we obviously want it to be a hosting package that's deployed to my reseller account that we've just added on that server. So Blueprint, it is a shared web hosting account. It is not any provider. That any provider option is, you see when you remember when we had that default tick box, that provider, if you tick any provider, would help you, would, would have it automatically choose which one it goes to. So. At the moment, we want it to go to cPanel. And then here I can specifically choose the server, or I could say it meets default. Um, I want the configuration here. I'm going to say I want it to be dynamic. What that means is the system up mine will dynamically choose which of my two servers it deploys to. And I can do that based on location. So you remember we added New York as an option. I'm going to say here. So if New York if this is ordered, it's going to deploy to one of the servers I've added, which has New York. Or I can keep it super simple. I can say static, and I can say I want this to deploy to the second server in New York. Further down, I can add a few more options. Most importantly, down here, I want to 
map it to a package name in WHM. So in WHM, let's go to packages, let's add a package. So we're going to call this package2, for example. Let's give it disk space of 1,000 megabytes and let's give it bandwidth of 10,000 megabytes, or approximately 10 gig. Let's add that package there. One thing to note with WHM if you have a reseller account is the package name usually has your username before it. So don't get, don't get confused by just putting package2, you'd have to give your username underscore package2. Only if your root would it be different. So we tick this, and we add it. That is now our product configured. So now we want to place an order for a client and have a hosting package ordered. So what I can do is I can do this as a client. So this, this product is now live, so somebody can actually order my example hosting package. In fact, let's do it. Let's, let's say testdomainhosting.com. Present the basket, go to checkout. I'm gonna, obviously I'm, this is a demo business and I don't actually make a payment. So I'm just gonna do pay later and then I'll show you in the back end the order and we'll complete that in the back end. Uh, so I go back here. You'll now see this is the this is the order I placed. Obviously, it's not actually paid, but I can cheat on the back end. And I'm going to go to invoices, go here, and then because I'm on the back end, I can enter a fake manual payment. That's now ordered. So. Now this product is ordered, let me just go back in as a client. Go products and services. This is now just awaiting activation. I'm sure what's happening in the back end is the cogs are turning. And if you go to the back end, you'll see it here. You can see it actually errored. So here's the WHM error. Test Doma is a reserved name on the system. So let's just We'll do this manually, but if it wasn't using that, it would have been a fine. So let's just call it uh, example. I hope you do before that. I'll show you something else which helps you debug these issues in a second. So now this is dispatching this to the server, but you see what would have happened if that domain wasn't test and WHM didn't throw an error is it would have created the account on the server. Still running. This is what it's this is what it's requested, but it hasn't got its response back yet. These API commands like this work for all sorts of things. So if you register a domain name, for example, you'll see the domain name request be dispatched. Same as you same if you renew a domain name. Also, if the account were to be suspended or terminated, you'll see the request here in the lot, and then you'll see it at errors or a successful. While we wait for that, I will just show you here all the logs. So this is a log of all the provisioning requests that have happened. So you can see here, these are all of them. I can quickly filter by error to see all the things that I've errored. This is still running. There we go. So that's now created successfully on the server. If I go back to the client, this hopefully has kept it, yep. Here now, the account's fully created. I can manage things, I can click here, and this is now me as a client, logging straight in 
into my cPanel account. And that's now completely automated. If, for example, here, this was to go overdue, and you know what I can do? I can cancel it. You'll see that the suspension, suspension has been dispatched. And then any second now you'll see my account has been suspended and I can no longer log in. That essentially is how the automation works. It's very straightforward. You link up a WHM resetter account, you create packages, and then when someone orders a package, it lets them log in, it creates the package. There's a lot more to it than that. Uh, in some other videos, I'm gonna cover things like the automated emails that you can send when a product is created, to configure the automation about what happens when something is paid or what happens when something is suspended, or even the dates at which things go overdue. But for now, hopefully that gets you set up with a WHM reseller account linking into Upmind.